that we're looking for. Dow Jones up 154, NASDAQ up 46, S&P up 15, and a Russell up about $9.60. So it wasn't a bad day, uh, but this is the bounce that I'm looking for coming off of the three-day sell-off. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, not really crazy about looking to short the market down here three days. Uh, now we have one day up. Let's see if we can continue either today or tomorrow and see where we end up. Uh, towards the end of the week. It's good. That's going to be interesting. And um, we still have risk aversion going on. I'm going to show that to you in the charts here. Uh, and I'm going to show you specifically some of these um, uh, uh, consumer staples and consumer discretionary. Very important. A lot of health care yesterday was up. Consumer staples were up. Utilities were up yesterday. So that is not a good sign. And the bounce was very weak. We had uh, really um, nothing to write home about. In the beginning, uh, the beginning of the, let's say, retracement rally we had yesterday, uh, markets looked like they were um, they were uh, really being, um, bought, uh, well, I should say, bid up. Uh, but the uh, then it started kind of dying out, and we just started grinding higher yesterday. So a weak bounce, at least in my eyes. And um, I want to show you a few other things. But we did get enough to the McClellan Oscillator here. Not a washout by any stretch of the means. Anything below 80 and 90 is really what you want to look for, and you get that big move higher. But um, we did get a little bit of a bounce off of that negative 70%. Uh, but I would like to see this come down a little bit more to, uh, to possibly uh, just kind of play that counter trend rally to the upside. Uh, buyers of dips, let's see what happens if they can continue to buy this dip. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Now, uh, the NYUD, as you can see, again, not anything to write home about. We're not looking for uh, not a big move to the downside. Uh, and again, and not a washout that I'm looking for, but low enough where we can probably get a little bit of a retracement rally. But you see, now this is where we where we uh, um, uh, really take a look underneath the hood here. The bullish percent, as you can see, really going nowhere, still on a sell signal from the beginning of September. So even if we get back to the 72-ish area, uh, and as long as we don't cross that 8 back over, uh, I'm sure I will be looking for lower prices. But now we have to monitor... Um, any type of this retracement, if we get a retracement rally, if we do get one and we get a uh, nice little move today and tomorrow, let's see how extensive it is. Let's monitor the volume and, of course, the other sectors that relate. Okay, and speaking of that, I wanted to show you this little, um, what I have here is it's a ratio chart of the consumer discretionary versus the consumer staples. I'm sorry, I apologize, backwards. Uh, consumer consumer staples versus consumer discretionary. And as you can see here, um, really when there's risk on, everybody likes to buy a little bit of, uh, uh, take on a little bit more risk. So they buy more discretionary versus the consumer staple stock. So this would go down as the S&P goes up. Uh, and then when you have a little bit of market turmoil, it's the other way around. And sure enough, we had that uh, right around here and uh, we continue to go up and then we actually sold off again. Now we broke this downtrend line here uh, and the markets are, uh, well, at least this ratio chart that I'm showing you looks like it wants to go higher. So when there's, um, when there's, uh, when uh, market participants when in doubt, uh, or there's a fear starting to creep up into the market, they will go to the healthcare, consumer staples, and of course utilities, uh, bonds in that sense. So anything that's a safe haven, uh, to park their assets temporarily until. Uh, a lot of this market turmoil subsides. So this is where we have to keep an eye on as well. So we have a lot of this moving, and they're not moved. They're outside of the realm. So uh, we do have money still flowing in in yesterday's uh, bounce. So that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, I get a couple emails about oil, and uh, this is another interesting chart here. This is the bullish percent energy sector. Okay, again based on a point figure chart. We're down at these extreme lows here, 27 percentile. Usually we get a little bit of a decent bounce. So I want you to watch that because uh, we could get a decent move in oil. Not saying that oil will change its course. And it actually absolutely can tra change the trend from down to up. But right now that's not the case. But if you can see here, we're extremely oversold. And I put a 63 slow stochastic just to show you. So once we get back up, we can get back up to the 
minus uh, 20. And if MACD can start to cross over, uh, then I think we, we might have something here. But if you take a look at the um, bullish percent with the uh, USO, uh, same thing. You see we're extremely oversold. So looking for a bounce. We did get one yesterday, but uh, keep an eye on this. Uh, this may need a little bit more work. And remember, when you are trading a USO or crude, Right now, to the long side, you are tra trading counter trend. Me personally, I'm not a big fan of shorting crude oil for any stretch of re and uh, any reason why is because the um, um, anything could happen, anybody could come out, especially down at these levels. I mean, if you're going to short it for the day, that's one thing, but I wouldn't be carrying a short position overnight in crude oil. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here. Now, um, I mentioned I showed you the dollar index, and this is going to this is a big big uh, factor here in the markets. Uh, a lot of these conglomerates and these multinational com companies that do business abroad eventually and probably is getting hurt. Uh, so that when we report numbers, when they report numbers in three weeks, um, you have to take, you got to keep an eye on this because this can actually really hurt a lot of the uh, multinational companies. And uh, it, this could really affect the, uh, the stock market in itself. Now this just broke out of um, this weekly resistance area in one shot and we're up now 12 weeks in a row we are grossly grossly overboard so we are in dire straits of a pullback you can see here's the eight look at how far away we are uh, but you know the ECB continues to um, uh, really devalue the euro they're going to take going to put money in the dollar but eventually it's going to affect our markets it might not do it right now uh, but it is going to affect our markets. so I do see this as an issue um, but at least for now, on this pull, if we get a pullback, remember, the commodity sector is going to scream to the upside uh, when this does happen. So, But I do get this pullback. If, it, if we do get one, it will be short-lived, and I think the dollar is now on track to get to um, 88, 88 here to 2618. Um, there's a resistance at 89 way back uh, a few years back. So I think this is going to be the target area um, coming in the coming weeks and months. Um, before we get a pullback. So we probably get a, some sort of a bull flag. I think commodities will start to really uh, will rally uh, again with oil. Uh, so I'm looking at that in, uh, in relationship to oil. And then once that happens, then uh, I, th I don't know where the oil would go, but I do think that the dollar will run up higher and then um, really start putting some pressure on the market. So we've got to really keep an eye on this. This really could be a big game changer for, um, for the U.S. markets. Okay, let's take a look at uh, ES. As you can see here, we did get a nice big move up. Uh, and we're coming, approaching now this area of uh, resistance. So um, keep an eye on this. And yesterday I mentioned we had a head and shoulders pattern here, which we do. And remember, you're at a spot right now where can you short the market? I, you know, I don't like to do so, not really on a one day up. I like to see if we go any higher. If we start really get to these areas above, we can't really break 2,000. If we break, up, if we break above 2,000, um, then we're going to just really come up to a head test here. Uh, so let's see what happens here. I'd like to see this start to roll, make a lower high from this previous high, sell off, and then start to break down again. So let's keep an eye on it's still valid, okay, but it has not triggered, right? Let's just make, make, make that aware. It has not triggered. There's a pattern. Sometimes you see the patterns, but they don't trigger. All right. Uh, let's take a look at the diamonds again, coming off the bounce of the 34 EMA. So we took back a day and a half. We had a gap fill here. So let's keep an eye and see um, if we have uh, further upside or if the market's going to want to roll over. And again, watching what the markets, um, how the markets play out, excuse me, uh, during the course of the trading day is, uh, is really going to give you a good signal, a good idea if this market really is done and we're starting to roll over again. A little too early to tell, okay? We did have some weakness for three days, but let's see if uh, buyers of dips continue to buy this market and then we, we just run up uh, again to new highs. That is possible and that's why we do not want to look to short the market for any stretch of means, at least not now. Uh, and let's get some further, um, let's get some further evidence here. Now here's another area, IWM, the Russell. Uh, we did get a bounce up, but we're still below the 200-day moving average, and it's weak. You see, the volume isn't so great, just basically below average volume. So that's another uh, red flag. If you look at the um, uh, transports, they moved up a little bit on higher volume. That's a good sign. It is our leader. So as you can see here, and we bounced off the 50-day moving average. So we're above the 50, below the 20 on all of the indices that I just showed you. So we're going to have to either break back above the 20 or... It caps
keeps to move and we start to break down again, okay? Um, and lastly is the Qs. The Qs actually uh, doing quite well. Um, it's above the 34, and you can see we had a little better than average volume uh, in the Qs. So just keep an eye on these indexes. They're going to give you some Qs, uh, clues, excuse me, and definitely be watching, um, you know, the uh, um, consumer staples, uh, health care. Get some ideas and get some clues along to see if this market is uh, uh, actually going to roll over uh, or if we're going to uh, move higher again. Now, if we start getting weakness in today again, uh, and then pretty much safe to say once we take out this 50-day moving average in a lot of these indices, uh, I think the markets are done for the short term. And remember, guys, watch that dollar. It's very, very important. Okay. All right, guys, have a great day. No video tomorrow, um, but we will have a full report on Monday. And also enjoy the weekend as well.